proud to be part of this government yeah, and yeah. for our first year and what we've achieved. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, Matt Ducey. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. That last speaker, I think, typifies this government. It's all about slogans. Yes, talking about child poverty, talking about it doesn't address it. How about the 9,000 extra people who are on a benefit this year? How about the 10,000 jobs a month being cut to 4,000? Talk about poverty. They're the drivers. Get people out of benefit and into work. So don't give us a lecture on slogans. Tell us what's happening out in the real world. And in the real world, people are hurting, Mr Speaker. And then we had the Honourable Damien O'Connor. Order, order. Sorry? No, sorry. I'm just, I'm just trying to draw the attention of the Minister who's been standing in an appropriate manner for some time. Matt Dusen. And then we had the Honourable Damien O'Connor refer to their first year of tenure as a kids' party. In fact, that's exactly what it feels like. Immature decisions, impulsive, with total disregard of who's going to pay for it. And who's going to pay for it? The taxpayer. And the taxpayer is bankrolling this government's poor policy decisions. Look at the fees-free policy. What an embarrassment. What an embarrassment. And Kieran McAnulty yells out, great idea. Great idea is what he yelled out. And there he goes. He's look, he knows that his government's got reports that a third of tertiary students drop out after their th first year. A third of that money is wasted. And they're bankrolling poor taxpayers' policies for their own bad policy. And, and Mr McAnulty will sit there and he'll call out, sit down, stand up. But the reality is he knows. Yes, his first election he didn't win, but he'll be thinking, hmm, they probably won't stick with me for the second one if I don't win in my seat. And it's policies like that that frustrate the voter. Because if you go out and talk to them now, what are they frustrated about? Fuel tax. Fuel tax. That's all. And see, here we go. He carries on about beltway issues in the bubble. He's got no idea what's frustrating taxpayers at the moment. Because the reality is, after one year, what's been shown by this government, they actually don't care about hard-working Kiwis. They don't care about hard-working Kiwis. Because if they did, they would ax the Auckland regional tax. And they're stubbornly denying it. Because as we've seen, that Auckland regional tax, the flow-on effect, is driving up petrol prices across New Zealand. And here we have Duncan Webb yelling at as well. He will know, because I know he's an MP on the ground. He will know he's getting feedback. Sorry? Yes, what about my people, Duncan Webb? I'll tell you what they're upset about is you cancelling the Belfast to Pegasus motorway. And do you know why? Because you've stripped out $5 billion out of the state regional funding. And NZTA turned up to the Wood End Residence AGM meeting a couple of weeks ago and said the Wood End bypass is now off the table because the new government has new priorities for prioritising funding for Auckland public transport projects. So you challenge me, of the people I represent, what's on their mind? Why are they paying money into the government coffers to pay for a tram in Auckland when you're cancelling a motorway that's much needed in a high growth area of Waimakariri? That's what my constituents are saying. So after one year, you tell me who cares for hard-working Kiwi families. I tell you what, it's the National Party for standing up for them and for making sure that you guys are held to account. And where did we see that today? Question time. If it wasn't for Simon Bridges, leader of the National Party, 
holding the Prime Minister to account, would we had a flip-flop on your regional tax? Because I tell you what, it was coming to Canterbury. Mr Speaker. Yeah. Dr Duncan Webb. Here we go. Beltway issue.